people. Good afternoon. How are you? Wow, it's been a while. I've really missed you. I hope you are well in the Lord. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am so excited to come to you this uh, Thursday afternoon. And you know uh, what it is? It is all things God. Now, wow, I've been away for a while, but I'm back, I'm back. I pray that I am rejuvenated to continue uh, with the work of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, I want to talk about transformation today. Uh, the time that I've taken off, I have been looking into this topic so intently because I don't want to be the same person today like I was yesterday. And there is one thing that is constant in life and that thing is change. And today we want to talk about change and transformation. Before, without much further ado, I'd like to thank my parents in the Lord uh, for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Pastor Alex and Mom Cecilia. You are really amazing. You have helped me to grow, you know, in leaps and bounds. And I'm really, really grateful for this opportunity. Kindly share this broadcast with your friends and family and ask them to subscribe, you know, and like and even share with their friends so that more people can get to know what is going on in Holy Gate of Heaven Ministry. You can find us in all our social media platforms, Holy Gate of Heaven Ministry, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, you know, all the social media platforms. Our website is www.hhmbungoma.org. Without much further ado, we will dive into it. But before that, let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray this afternoon that you will help me articulate whatever it is that you have given me, you have put in my heart, so that the viewer will be transformed for the glory and honor of your holy name. Holy Spirit of God, help me through it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I love you and I bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, can somebody say amen? You can type your amen in the comment section. As I've asked you earlier, kindly share with your friends, share with your family, and let's go into it. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all, who with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into the, His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. i read that again. And we all, who with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the lord who is spirit the word that has really caught my, my heart is being transformed into his image and you know each and every day we ought to work towards being transformed to the image of our lord jesus christ to be like him, to think like him. And you know, we are ambassadors of Christ here on earth. So we ought to do things the way he would have done if he were here on earth right now. Now, I want you to ask yourself, if the Lord Jesus Christ was here right now, what would he be doing, you know? Um, and I, I, I meant to understand different people, according to the parable of the talents, are given different talents, you know? And the Lord equips us differently for the glory and honor of his name. There are so many spheres of life that we can influence people to know God, or we can use the, that place you know, to glorify God. So today I just came to tell you kindly, wherever you are, in whatever field, may it be politics, if it's uh, you know, arts, whatever field that you are in, if it's business, use that platform to glorify the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I really bless the Lord for what he's doing right now in Kenya. You know, uh, like two, three years ago, somebody could talk about politics and everyone was like, you know, politics is a dirty game and what have you. But right now, because of what our president is doing, you know, acknowledging our Lord Jesus Christ in public, you know, people now are more interested in politics. And now we, we know that, you know, politics is not bad after all. It's just a... Uh, a sphere, you know, and we can influence it for the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, for us to grow and for us to transform from one stage to another, we have to change our mind, as it is written in Romans 12. But before I read Romans 12, let, let's read um, Matthew 9, 17. It says, neither, neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. 
the wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skin and they both are preserved. So what am I saying? If you want to pour new knowledge into your system, if you want to change your mind, you have to remove the old for there to be a new. So you cannot be thinking the same way you were thinking yesterday and you expect there to be something new. In fact, uh, someone say that you cannot do things the same way you used to do yesterday and expect different results. According to the message translation, Romans 12, 1 says, So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without ever thinking. Instead, now this is what I want you to hear, fix your attention on God. Instead, Fix your attention on God. Now, on Sunday, just this last Sunday, our pastor preached something about uh, worry. And there's something he said that was so profound. He said, most of the time, we worry so much because we think about self. Wow. And here the word of God says that we should fix our attention on God. Now, we worry so much because we, we you know, we worry because we think about self. What will I eat? What do people think about me? What will I wear? Where will I? You know, school fees and what have you. So every time we are worrying about what can I gain? You know, you are worrying about yourself. But the word of God is telling us for us to prosper, we have to change our mind and we have to fix our attention to God. And then it says, when you fix your attention to God, you'll be changed from the inside out and quickly respond to it. Readily recognize what he wants you to do and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down into its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. So for you to walk in maturity, you have to look to God. Stop looking at self. What can I do? What can I offer? Then look to God. He's the one who helps us to become more like Him. Now, change is going to, to tell us what you're made of. You know, sometimes uh, change will tell us if you're fortified or not. Change will tell us if you have prepared for it or not. You know, as I started, I said that change is something that is so constant. You're, it's, you know, that is the only thing that is constant in the world. We know that things will change, whether we like it or not. Things will change. You'll move from one state to another. Life must go on. Now, I remember there's a time, I will use the example of our phones. You know, as we were growing up, there is a time everyone had the, what we call kabambe, you know? Uh, and the Kabambe you can only text and maybe call, you know. But with time, phones started coming up, you know, with bigger space, with bigger capacity of doing stuff. You find that a phone, you know, can call, you can browse the phone. You know, with time we found that, oh, the same same phone can take pictures. And the more uh, expens expensive the phone is, the more things it can do or the more capacity it has. You find that phones have spaces of 16 GB, 32 GB, 64, 128, uh, 256, 512, and the more uh, the space it has, the more you find that it can handle stuff. So today I came to tell you what is the, your capacity, you know, to handle change. What is your capacity to handle things in life? You have to work on your capacity. And you find that most phone, phones have expandable memory, as in you can add, you can add a memory card, you know? And this means that uh, also you, when you read the Word of God, when you renew your mind with the Word of God, you can now expand your memory using the Word of God. So work on yourself day in, day out understanding that things must change. 
there will be a time who you are right now will not be the same person tomorrow. And in fact, I've come to realize that so many people, at the end of the day, we are deterred from going to the next level because of our past success. You know, yesterday you did something and it was wonderful. Now you peg all your pride in it and you don't work because of tomorrow. Now you have to work because of tomorrow. Because yesterday is gone, tomorrow is coming. And those that will survive tomorrow are the ones who have prepared for tomorrow. So how prepared are you for tomorrow? How prepared are you for change? You know, I was reading, uh, let me just look at it. I was reading at uh, the generations that have passed. You know, there are four generations that have passed that uh, have been put down. There is a baby boomers. Those are from 1940 to 1959. Uh, that, uh, and then they are followed by Generation X. That is from 1960 to 1979. Then Generation Y, who are also called the Millennials. Uh, 1980 to 1994 and then there is Generation Alpha 1995 to 19 uh, to 2010 you know all these people have different ways of doing things you know like for example the Millennials that is the time that is from 1980 to 1994 that is the time the internet internet was introduced and whether you like it or not the internet is here to stay how can you use internet for the glory of God? How can you use it positively for the glory of God? I came to realize that those from 1960 to 1979 really loved politics, you know, they were communal, and you find that those families in that, in that time, you know, they were very rich together because they didn't have televisions and what have you. So they, they really put their time to uh, commune together as a community. So they really pick their interest more on, you know, family life and what have you. But now you find that people put their interest more on um, internet and what have you. So as a Christian, how are you changing with things? Now that things are becoming better and faster, you know, uh, machines are replacing people. Or are you still remaining the same? You know, when you still remain this, the same way you were yesterday, then tomorrow you will suffer. So kindly, today I just came to tell you, we have to change. We have to change with changes. But we can use change in a positive way. We can use change to glorify God. We can use whatever it is that is coming up now to glorify God. So you as a person, where are you? Where are you in the change? Do you refuse, resist change? So do not accept for change to leave you behind. What differentiates a, a winner and a loser is action. Some just believe as a believer, you know, you just believe on things and then you leave them at that. But those that are called winners in life must work on something. Now, um, I really like something that I saw somewhere. Someone said that you can be wrong once, and if you're wrong once, you can be wrong again and again. Why am I saying that? You know, uh, sometimes as people of God, we might refuse change. We might refuse to work with the trends. And what happens at the end of the day? You are left behind. So sometimes it's good for you to look at it and say, by the way, I, I, I was wrong. You know, I was wrong about ABCD and I have to change right now. So today I just came to tell you kindly change because if you do not change, then you will be swept off. Proverbs 25 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings uh, is to search out a matter. You know, uh, it's just the other day I saw, I was talking to my father in the Lord. And there is something, there is a dream that I had. And you know, the way I, I thought about it and I saw the dream, I, I, to me it looked very scary. And when I talked to him about it, you know, the way he, he searched the dream out and through the help of the Spirit of God and revealed what the, the, the dream meant, I was like, wow, I'd really like to grow, you know. So that is what I'm talking about. There is always someone who is ahead of you. There is always someone you can learn something from. And you know, you have to 
change your mindset. You have to change the way you do stuff. You have to change the way you, you look at things. So, what is your effect of failure in your life? As in, when you fail, what is the effect of your failure in the life of others? You know, if you refuse change, you will definitely fail. And I'm asking you today, when you fail, what is the effect that you will have in other people? Because you know what? There are some people who will succeed because you have succeeded. There are some people who will stand because you stood. So today I came to challenge you to tell you that whatever it is that is making you not to go where you ought to be right now, work on it. Transform yourself with knowledge, the knowledge of the Word of God. Transform yourself with the knowledge of the things of God. You know, prayer, whatever it is that you need to work on, ask the Spirit of God. You know, I thank God for the Spirit of God. He's the one who helps us. You know, when Jesus Christ went to be with the Father, He said, I am leaving you a helper. Now we have a helper. We bless the name of the Lord. I thank the Lord for His Word. You know, His Word is yes and amen. And that is how we'll be able to be transformed, to become just like Jesus. Thank you so much for your good time that you have been with me. I pray that you will uh, send this broadcast to your friends and family. Listen to it again and again. I am sure there is something that can work for you. And keep listening to it until it really sinks into you that you have to change with time. Like right now, it is a season of revival in Kenya. So the Church of Jesus Christ in Kenya must adjust to what is happening right now. What does that mean? More prayer, you know, more word of God, more evangelism, because the, you know, it's ripe. The season is ripe for souls to come to the kingdom of God. Until next time, God bless you. Shalom. Kindly share, 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 like, and yeah. You can find me on my social media pages, Laura Jumba. YouTube and Facebook, yeah, All Things God page on Facebook. Uh, our church page, Holy Gate of Heaven Ministry, in all our social media platforms, and also our website is www.hhmbungoma.org. Until next time, shalom.